everyone, Rogue Gold here, and today I thought I'd do a bit of a guide or general information video about some of the setting, UI, and quality of life secrets or hidden components within The Division 2 because this is a complex game and game franchise. And so it should come at little surprise that there are a fair number of complex and hidden tweaks you can make to your experience that can pretty drastically alter it and improve it depending on your preferences and all of that jazz. I've seen a few of these types of videos float around the community before, and while I'm sure there will certainly be some overlap here, I do want to go beyond just the settings themselves, but also show you some of the lesser known UI interactivity secrets you can learn to enhance your experience. And so that said, I can almost guarantee that there will be at least one thing on this list that you didn't know about. I won't say for sure because some of you are crazy with your dedication and knowledge of the game, but for me personally, there's a few items on this list here that I only learned a matter of months ago, and that's coming from someone who's played this game pretty religiously ever since it released. So I'm just going to make my way down the list of things I've picked up on and learned over the years that have enhanced my playing experience with the division. Division 2. If you're a newer player, then hopefully this will be super helpful in allowing you to customize your playthrough a little bit better, and if you're a veteran, hopefully there's still a thing or two that you can pick up on. But that said, if there are any additional tips or secrets that you think are valuable that I don't end up covering, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. Let's all pool our knowledge together and create a bit of a good reference point for any players in need. Uh, so yeah, let's kick it off. I'll timestamp all these things and label them down in the description, so feel free to browse around and pick through the ones that sound interesting or new to you. Let's go. All right, so we're going to start off with a few different uh, settings that I feel are very crucial for everybody to know about. This first one in particular, I would think the majority of people know about at this point, but if you don't, it is, I would say, one of the most crucial things you want to at least be aware of uh, because it does uh, very drastically alter your experience. Uh, and in my case, I would, you know, well... I won't say that, but it, it makes it a whole lot more enjoyable for myself personally, and that is FOV. If you can see, uh, this is what the, the game looks like if you boot it up and you never change any of the settings, right? And, you know, looks fine. But then, if you go into your settings, you go to gameplay, you want to go way down to the bottom, and you will see additional field of vision. And basically what that does is it just it pulls back the camera and it widens the, the uh, angle at which you can see. So we're going to bump that. I play at 25, and so you'll see... That's a pretty big difference from what we were just at. How much more you can see in your peripheral. Um, this really helps in PvP and in PvE and just in general circumstances. Now, not everybody like this uh, likes this setting. That's totally fine. Uh, but it, you should definitely be aware that it exists. And then if you do like to play with that, um, you can also go and increase the additional field of vision while aiming, which just means when you ADS, it'll widen that um, amount you can see as well. And I like to play with that at 25 as well. So if you didn't know those are there, now you do. Very important uh, for these types of games in general. Next up, we have another very important one, at least in my opinion, um, that'll really help you enhance your combat experience when you're in the Division 2. And so we're heading down to the range. And this one has to do with your skills. So... If you don't, again, if you're going into the game, you haven't changed any settings anywhere, when you use a skill, it's going to do that, and then you're going to get a bar, you can see right there, for how long of a cooldown timer that has. So you don't get any numbers. Let me just turn that off so it's a little bit more visible. If I pop the pulse, you'll see it goes again, and then once it's done, the bar starts filling up to let you know how long before you can use it again. And sometimes that's enough, but a lot of the times, at least in my case, I want to know... Uh, how much time is left before I can use that thing again. So what you can do, go in settings, we're going to do gameplay again, and a little bit before the FOV, did I go by? Yeah. Show numeric skill cooldown time. You want to click to yes. And now, if I do the same thing again, I pop the pulse, you will see that now a number shows up, letting me know how many seconds are left before I can use the skill again. Again, not everybody uh, might want to take advantage of that, but myself personally, I very much enjoy having it, um, and I've ran it ever since the game came out. So certainly try that one out if you were unaware. All right, now this next one, I just joined up with a random group so I can quickly show you uh, why this is so valuable. So I just joined, uh, this only applies when you're in groups, and that's why I, I joined somebody. You can see down in the corner that, uh, as per normal, you can see both of your teammates' names or however many people are in your group uh, at the bottom right when you join a group. Well, what I think is, I, I see no reason why you wouldn't want this on. If you go to gameplay, very close to where that last one was, if you go to show skills on group frame, and you hit yes, whereas before it just gave you their name and no other information besides their armor bar, now you can see the skills that they're using. I find that to be incredibly useful. Um, I don't know really, I, I don't know why you wouldn't want that unless you just want the most minimalistic UI possible, uh, but that one is very useful, so I figured I would show it to you. All right, now this next one, I do not take of, or I do not take advantage of personally myself. However, it is it can be very uh, useful in allowing you to really customize your experience, and so that is why I wanted to show it to you guys in case you were unaware 
uh, because it is pretty major. If you go to settings, UI, customize HUD, you can move pretty much anything on your UI, which I, I think a lot of people do know about, but in case you don't, I just wanted to let you know that that is a thing you can do. You can see you can change the uh, radars uh, location, you can change your XP values at the top right, you can change in conflict to where your different uh, little awards and the kill feed and the scoreboard is, you can change the group thing in the bottom, and they have different, here I'll just switch up layout three because I'm not going to use this, uh, which one can I go to, cycle up selection, there we go, I can move that around, you can scale it up, scale it down, save that there, and move to, a lot of people change the radar, that's like the popular one to do, my friend plays with this like right here in the middle, so you can make it as big as you want, as small as you want, put it wherever you want. You can do that with anything, and I think that's a really cool option that they have, um, both for accessibility and just if people want in different spots. I happen to like the way that the devs choose to lay out a lot of this stuff, so I don't change any of it, um, but a lot of people do, and so that option is there for you if you so choose to take advantage of it. Next up, this one might be a shocker to some people. I only learned about this, I mean, it was a good number of months ago, maybe six months ago, but still, I was kind of shocked that I didn't know this before until I saw someone streaming and using it, um, and it's pretty, cru uh, not crucial, but it can really change the experience if you want to do it. So, currently, with, again, if you go into the game and not change any of the settings, anything with a circle, you get a light little outline around it, you can see the, the gray lines are floating around there, uh, but it's not, like, super defined, right, beyond, like, the colors. Well... If you so choose, you can go into the settings and you go down to uh, accessibility, I believe, should be, or it's under, yeah, accessibility, closer to the bottom. If you go to the colorblind mode and switch it to the first of the three, I'm not even going to pretend to try and say that, but it's uh, the one that starts with a D, switch it to that, and now everything has a very defined radius and outline, including anything that's a circle or uh, that's a throwable, I should say. So the Revive Hive, um, even when you place it down, if there are enemy hives in the DZ or in PvP, those will show up, or ally ones in PvE. Grenades will have them. Anything will have it. And it can really help you out. If you or if you just need the colorblind settings in general, those are there for you to take advantage of. But uh, switching to that as someone who does not who is not colorblind like myself, it doesn't change anything for, uh, you know, on your screen. All the colors still look the same. You just gain access to this pretty cool... Um, you know, extra bit of, uh, of visual clarity if you need it. Again, I don't play with it because I don't feel like I really need that, and I feel like it clutters up the screen a little bit too much, but I know a lot of people do love it, and they do run it uh, with pretty much everything, so I uh, figured I would let you guys in on that one. Again, a little bit hidden, not quite, uh, you know, advertised, but it can be really cool if you want to take advantage of it. All right, now this one I am only including because I've gotten so many questions about this over time uh, that I feel like I should just include it because I feel like a lot of people aren't aware. Obviously, I think a lot of people know that in the shooting range, you have a lot of different options you can change. You can change what kind of uh, veterancy your target is that you're shooting, make it normal, uh, veteran, elite, whatever. Uh, it can turn off the extra skill haste or not if you want it. Might as well turn that back on. You can damage yourself if you want to test out healing and whatnot. So you have a lot of options, right? Well, the one thing that you can do that I don't think a lot of people are aware of, or I should say a lot of people have told me that they're not aware of over time, is, yeah, you, it pops up a random target when you change it, and maybe that's helpful, maybe it's not, but say you want to make it closer, look what's right up here, folks. That stands for meters. The number's up there, so you can set your target at 5, 10, 15, and 20 meters, and that'll then place it there until you want to change it, right? Shoot that one down, it comes back, whereas if you don't do that, it'll just pop up at a random spot. And that can be not very helpful depending on what type of build you're trying to test out. So let's say I want the full 20, and now it puts it all the way down there. Can be very helpful, as I'm sure you are now aware. You can do the same with the range one. Um, if you want to set it a little closer, a little farther, this can help if you're trying to test out different talents, different builds, whatnot. Now you know it's there, um, so hopefully that helps you out if you weren't aware that that was a thing. All right, now this is another one that I've gotten a lot of questions about over time. I have a feeling some people watching this don't know that this is a thing, um, so I totally want to let you in on this because it can uh, very much change the experience totally for, um, especially when you're fighting and hitting your shot, and that is damage numbers. So the one, let me set this a little bit higher so that we can see it for a little bit longer. The one that you're going to see right now is the default uh, damage number setting. I'm sure that looks familiar to anyone who's played The Division uh, 2 or 1. And so, where it just kind of pops around everywhere, right? It kind of clutters up the the dot a little bit, and that is why it can be so helpful to change the way that your damage numbers are displayed. If you go down to, what is it, in UI, 
and right here, this middle one, scrolling combat text actually changes the way that your damage numbers are displayed. Now, the one that I play with is floating. So random sphere is the default, and that's where you're gonna have it on if you've never changed anything. But if you go over to floating, you'll now see that all shows up on the side. And this actually, when I switched to this, I actually found it so relieving because you get so much more clarity on the crosshair. And it can actually be very useful for landing headshots, learning your aim, whatever. Um, and it, it's over time, I've just come to like it a lot. It's very nice. Um, so that's one option. The other one they have, I think is kind of weird, uh, but let's look at it. The last one they have is 2D. What does that do? Okay, so it's basically the same as the first one, except it doesn't go above the crosshair. Just kind of spits it out down there. That's kind of cool. It's whatever you want, right? It's another option to customize the experience. But like I said, it can really help in combat and for learning your aim and whatnot. That's why I really like floating. Um, but go ahead and try them out. Set it to whatever you like and have fun. All right, now these next few, I'm going to just kind of bundle into one because they are a few different uh, settings in terms of what they do, but they are in the same general location. And I don't know how many people are aware of this. I have a feeling a good amount of people are, uh, but I, I already know someone watching this video is not going to know this is here. Um, so that's enough for me to want to include it. If you go into your menu, obviously there are a lot of settings you can mess with in here, right? You can change your, uh, as you can see in the bottom right, you can do inspect on the different things. Uh, get that going on. You can mod stuff, of course. You can look at the details of stuff and do all that. You can compare with different things. You can mark and do all the stuff. Well, one thing that I'm kind of surprised isn't more accessible or isn't more advertised is that you have to go into a specific piece. So let's say you're clicking on a gun or you're clicking on a, uh, a gear piece and look at what changes down there is that you can now click on the left stick for options, which you can't do from this screen. You have to go into a, a category and then when you click that, you then get this stuff, right? And what you can do here is you can actually do a lot of interesting stuff. You can change the layout of your inventory because this is the default one. Oh, I still have the color blend on. I should turn that off. You have this one, but then you can change it to that. And a lot of people prefer this. Look, you can see double the amount of stuff. You get less stats unless you hover over something. That's why I prefer it the other way. Uh, but this is totally valid as well if you prefer this as well. And a lot of people do. A lot of my friends play with this. So you can do that. And that chain that will hold then to you know any anywhere else in your inventory. Uh, you can go back in. So that's on the the left side there, inventory view. Down at the bottom, uh, you can turn on that stuff. The the most valuable one here, in my opinion, is the always show mask, which they only added in 212. So if you haven't played in the last however long, you might not even know this is a thing. Basically, uh, this was a feature that people had asked for ever since the Division One. And so if I go and take my cosmetic mask off. Uh, this is what it would normally look like unless you're in the DZ, right? And that's when you put your mask on for the contaminated areas. Well, let's say you really like how this looks. Go back into that thing, turn on, always show mask. And now even when you're not in the dark zone, it'll keep your mask on. And so you, if you prefer one of the gear masks to one of the cosmetic ones and you want to have that everywhere in the game, you can do that. And I don't, you know, I'm sure, again, a lot of people are aware of this, but I'm sure some people are not. Um, and that can be a really cool thing if you want to up your transmog, do all that stuff. Um... It can be really cool. So that's that. And then the uh, one last thing in here is that on the right side, this is super helpful. You can sort the gear that shows up in your uh, inventory, right? So you, you can see it's obviously it's going to be on default if you've never changed it. Being sorted by level, quality, brand, recent, new, name, armor, favorite, junk, sell value, loadout. There's a lot of stuff you can do. So if I hit loadout, now everything that's, that is in a loadout will show up first before stuff that is not down here. Um... If you want to set it to, let's do quality, uh, that'll do what exotics and then and then gear sets. So that can be very helpful. You can do it by anything. And it's all depending on what your preference is. Favorite, I choose new because I really like when I pick up new stuff that it just shows it first. So I can just decide if I want to keep it or, or scrap it. Um, so that's what I set it to. Being set to whatever you want. You can see there's a ton of options here. The one thing I will note with this is that it does like to reset itself. Uh, after you log off. So the first, when every time you log on, you might have to go in and reset that. Um, just place it on the one you want to sort by. But if you're doing, you know, two-hour play sessions, it's not a huge um, not a huge detriment to set it once when you log on. It is annoying. I, I asked the devs before about it and never got a response, unfortunately. Um, but, so, it's there if you want it. It is really helpful, at least for me, when I'm doing PvP especially. I'm just getting a ton of intake of new stuff. You'll see I'll open one of these. I have it set to new. And so, if I go to the knee pads now, that's going to show up first is this new piece, don't want it, junk, you know, new gun here, don't want it. It just helps, uh, for me, it helps sorting stuff um, a ton. And so that's why I like it. And that whole subset of menu, again, you have to go into something, click left stick, 
or you know whatever it is on PC. I'm going to get access to this whole another layer of settings that aren't very obvious from the start if you aren't aware that they're there. All right, so this next one is not like incredibly impactful to gameplay or whatever. It's just kind of a nice little uh, tidbit if you want to know, right? This is the one that I learned the most recent about. Um, I wasn't aware of this for a long time. And so uh, that is actually that when you die, whether it's in the dark zone or the light zone, this is just where I chose to, to demonstrate it, you can remove the death marker that shows up on your body and that will uh, in turn free up your screen space a little bit, especially if you die right by a checkpoint and it's kind of like obstructing your view. This can help out a lot. So I'm gonna let this guy kill me. Go ahead, buddy. Go ahead, do it. I, oh, I can't throw my half because he EMP'd me. Get that out of there. Do it. There you go. All right, so I'm gonna die, and then gotta wait 15 seconds for the rogue timer to go down. But the, I'm sure everyone's familiar with if you played this game, the red X that shows up on your body. There was actually a command on the screen to remove that that I was not aware of. And so if we go, I think, do I have to respawn first? Yeah, so let me do that quick, and then it should again pop up. Again, can be really helpful if you die right next to a checkpoint, you're trying to respawn with a bunch of teammates and can get cluttered. If you hover over the death location, look at that, you can hit Y, and it gets removed. So, again, not super, uh, you know, impactful to your gameplay, but it can be uh, very nice to do, like I said, depending on the, the situation, and it's just a nice little tidbit, thought I'd throw it in, because like I said, I didn't know about that for a long time, and I bet at least some of you didn't either. All right, everyone, that is going to do it for my list of essential setting UI and quality of life secrets that I feel you need to know. Obviously, there are a ton more settings and whatnot for players to go through, but in general, across my time with this franchise and in this community, a lot of the things I just covered are specific bits of information I've either been asked about repeatedly or I've seen people uh, learning about all the time. Like, I continually get questions about the uh, the range setting and the firing range as well as how to set your damage number display. Stuff like that are just things that a lot of people aren't aware of. And then something like clearing your death marker is pretty insignificant, but it's something I only learned about a few months back, so I figured why not share it. Regardless, everybody, I hope you all took away something of value uh, from that, and I hope that uh, you can pass that on to those who may be in need of knowing in the future. Thank you all so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and be sure to subscribe with notifications on so you can be updated every time I upload. Let me know your thoughts on some of these neat little secrets. Anything that shocked you? Anything you didn't already know? Also, like I said at the start of the video, be sure to leave anything I didn't cover that you feel is worthwhile down in the comments below. There's always something for someone to learn and that's what I hope to create with this video. That's going to do it for me though, everybody. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and until the next one, guys, Rogue Gold. Ow.